Before we begin, I would like to offer my gratitude to Masters Thancred and Uriange. It is no small feat to infiltrate the Imperial capital and live to tell the tale, much less in times of civil war. Thanks to them, we may plot our course in full knowledge of how the winds blow in Garlemald. Full glad are we to have been of service. But, verily, such dangers as we did encounter pale into insignificance next to those faced by our comrades. An Asian, armed with the might of Bahamut, bent on bringing about the final days. Theatrix. He sought only to make a show of the power at the Telephoroi's disposal. But since then we have seen no sign of this fan Daniel or his worm. And while we've done what we can to bolster our defenses, there's no telling where he might strike next. Whenever and wherever it may be, we must use the intervening time to learn more of our enemy. It was with this in mind that we dispatched scouts to investigate the towers. Our advance party took longer than expected to return. And when they did, they tried to kill us. Luckily, I'd seen that sort of thing before, and we were able to restrain them before they did any harm. Then it was just a matter of letting the Porksies do their work. Are you saying they were tempered? Once they'd come back to their senses, they told us everything they could. It seems that just as they were getting close to the tower, they heard an ear-splitting roar. And that was the last thing they remembered. But what worries me most is what they were saying right before they attacked. Glory be to Garlemont. The Tempered have heretofore ever been thralls to primal entities. Yet these hapless souls were compelled to accept a nation as the object of their devotion. This calleth into question all that we know of the condition. Would that the unsettling news ended there. Alas, there is more. Following the earlier reports of missing Amalja, we have learnt that other beast tribes have suffered similar losses. And we now have reason to believe that the abductions are connected to the appearance of the towers. Our scouts sighted black-garbed figures leading shackled Ixel in the direction of the tower in Dravania. The Temple Knights were able to intercept them before they could reach their destination, liberating the Ixel and apprehending their captors, each of whom was found to be equipped with Garlean arms and armor. So the Empire is the common thread. With the support of Xenos, it seems likely that Fandaniel has rallied a faction of the splintered Garlean army to the banner of the Trilophoroi. Lord Hien reached the same conclusion when I shared our findings with Doma. The plan had been to march on Garlemald from the east and west in order to force a peace treaty. But the situation has changed. Dealing with the threat of the towers must come first. Given the nature of the enemy and the proven risk of tempering, I could think of few suitable candidates to aid in this task. But I am confident in my choice. What? Resistant to primal influence as they are, they can investigate the towers without fear of being turned. We are glad to put our gifts to use, Commander. Gifted or not, 
Going behind enemy lines remains a perilous undertaking. But we must know more if we're to strike back at our foe. I'm counting on you. If it would give us the upper hand, I'd do it a hundred times over. We won't let you down. That concludes the briefing. You two, make ready and join your escort. Are you certain about this, Arunvald? I am. Come on, let's talk outside. So you know, I've already gone through all the formalities at the Rising Stones. Made sure to inform Jamulver and Vmar at Ralga's Reach as well. Arunvold, I admire your enthusiasm. But this is far more dangerous than anything you have done before. I know the risks. And I also know what's in store if we don't stop Fan Daniel from carrying out his plan. With this power of mine, I can make a difference. If I stood idly by, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And you, Fudola? Is this what you want? What are you asking me for? It's not like I have any say in the matter. Don't pretend. We both know Commander Aldin gave you a chance to refuse. And you didn't. <clears throat> so the Empire's finished, is it? But that's what they're all saying. That the great and glorious Garlemald slit its own throat. And now, from out of its twitching carcass, crawls the Telophoroi with bloody Xenos at its head! I fought for Garlemald. Killed for Garlemald. What was I part of? I need to know. Whatever it is, I need to know. Very well. If your hearts are set on this, I shall not stand in your way. If you finish with your touching display of camaraderie, I have a question. Which tower are you planning to investigate, exactly? Well, the one in Girabani is said to be tightly guarded. It's patrol after patrol out there, apparently. We'd be spotted before we got anywhere near it. Which is why we've set our sights on the one in Pagalthan instead. There shouldn't be anything like as many Imperials to worry about down there. Even so... I doubt the local Amalja will look kindly on it if they catch you sneaking around in their territory. Fordola and I had a chance to learn the lie of the land in our previous forays there. We might still find trouble, but at least we won't lose our way. Well, we'd best not keep them waiting any longer. Mayhap when all of this is over, we could take another trip to Loxeld, 
I would have you know I've become a rather capable swimmer since our last visit. Ha! <laughs> I'll believe that when I see it. Though, to be fair, getting into deep water does seem to be a scion's lot in life. Take care, Ray. It means a lot, you know. You come in with me. I still owe you for saving my skin, don't I? Can't return the favour if I'm not there. I dare say you'll get your chance before long. That Van Daniel sounds like a tricky customer. Too much for the likes of me, anyway. But we both know I'd just be another soldier if it weren't for my gift. And I need to be a damn sight more than that, given what's coming. I realise I can't hold a candle to a hero like the Warrior of Light, or Alfino, for that matter. He might look like he's 12, but he's seen more action than most people see in a lifetime. No, the fact is, I'm nothing like them, and maybe I never will be. But I'll be damned if I don't try. They're counting on me. On us. So let's give it our all. He does not want for conviction, that much is certain. So let us have faith in him, him and Fordola both. While they see to the towers, I would attend to another task chasing down this lunar Bahamut. Ah, oh, bloody thing. Can you hear me? It's Tataru. Oh, I'm happy to say we've managed to find Estinian. And I'm sorry to say he went running off again the moment we told him about Bahamut. But... He did mutter something about heading to Ishgard, so if you're quick, you might still be able to catch him. Even if we set out this instant, he may already have left by the time we arrive. Have her send the Bonanza to Ishgard. It may prove useful should we need to give chase. I'll see to it as soon as Krile and I get back to the Rising Stones. Good luck. While you go off on your dragoon hunt, Urianje and I will return to headquarters. We have much to tell the others. I wish you every success in your search for our elusive friend. May we all meet again ere long. No sign of him. Not that I've ever met him before, but the way Alphano goes on about him, I'm fairly sure I could pick him out in a crowd. Speaking of which, it does seem awfully quiet. If the erstwhile Azure Dragoon had returned to Ishgard, would it not be a source of general excitement? First the Scion's coin keeper, and now you. I'm beginning to think these meetings are more than mere coincidence. Not that I'm complaining. It's been too long. Too long? You look an ilm taller and twice as rugged. It suits you, Alphano.
quieter, though. Have you been giving him lessons on how to be the strong, silent type? I... am not... Alphano! If the two of you are such firm friends, perhaps you should remember what he looks like. And what do you mean, rugged? Ugh! Had my brother mentioned what an oaf you are, I'd never have bothered looking for you in the first place. Estinian Wormblood, the Azure Dragoon. He who fought and felled the Dread Worm Nidhogg at the Warrior of Light's side. To think the day would come when I should see this living legend with my own eyes. Would someone mind explaining what is going on? Is everything all right? I thought I heard Alizé shouting. Estinian! It's been too long. No, no, it's quite understandable. That was hardly the first time we've been confused for one another. Nor, I suspect, will it be the last. Well, I for one will not be making that mistake again. What I will say, for the second time today, is that you've grown. Inside and out. I can tell. One can't remain a spoiled little lordling forever, you know. At least someone's having a good time. You know when we were growing up, Alphano would never befriend other boys because he couldn't stand the thought of not being in charge. But maybe that's changed. He seems just as happy around Astinian as he does Arenvald. You're joking, aren't you? I'd be glad if someone would take him off my hands. No rest for the righteous, eh? Speaking of which, I was just on my way to borrow an airship to take me to Azisla. Azisla? How could I forget? The dragon with whom Bahamut shared the deepest of bonds. Aye, Tiamat, his mate. Even now she remains imprisoned on Azisla, though her remorse binds her faster than any shackle. I see. As the one who first summoned Bahamut, you believe she may be able to shine some light on his latest incarnation. Might I suggest that we make the journey to Azisla together? I'm not sure if Tataru mentioned this, but we Scions have an airship of our own now. I see no reason why not. Assuming your sister can bear the thought of sharing a deck with me. Be my guest. But confuse me with Alphano again and I'll throw you overboard. Ugh! I don't know who he thinks he is, but he's nothing like Alphano painted him to be. I will admit, he is not exactly as I imagined him either. Based on what I had read of the man, I think I was expecting someone a little less... blunt?
It's plain she knows naught of recent events. Perhaps you should enlighten her. Much like those held here in Asisla. If dragons who worship Bahamut are required to summon him, that must mean. Your children's pain means nothing to them. They laugh at your kind suffering. But tears will not right this wrong, nor will lamentation see the perpetrators punished. <laughs> Behavior befitting a great worm. We came here to ask mighty Tiamat of the first brood, consort of Bahamut, mother of the dragons of Maracidia, what she intends to do about the crimes committed against her children. You too were exposed to his influence. That you are yet in possession of your own will is testament to the indomitable strength of your soul. But were you to meet with Bahamut again, you fear you might succumb. <laughs> Oh. 
On the matter of Bahamut's influence, at least, I believe we can be of some assistance. If you're afraid of being enthralled, don't be. We have a cure. And while we've never tried it on one such as you, its basic principles are universal. Usk she's in. There is no future for those bound to the past. That you committed a terrible sin, I do not dispute. But if you feel remorse, you may yet make amends. We offer you that chance. Take it, or you will forever remain a prisoner. Not of these cruel shackles, but of your own guilt. Sahaban said so. for certain until the shackles are removed. Many have been subjected to the Allegan's dark arts, their flesh irrevocably altered. For such tortured souls, I fear there can be no salvation.
When that time comes, you won't be alone. We'll stand by you. She's in Alpha knows ready. It's time. Do it. And let's hope the treatment worked as it should. Anjay, your timing could not be better. Understood, we're on our way. It's Bahamut. He's been sighted over Pagalthan. He flies for the largest amount of settlement in the region, at the head of a vast host, including dragons. Hear all that, Alpha? No. You'd best rejoin your comrades. I'll make my own way. Our enemy awaits. Shall we?
chose their friends well. Long have our peoples waged war, but no more. Your fallen lie beside our own. By our words and deeds, Shall we honor their sacrifice? The enemy of our enemy is our friend. And you have proven yourselves worthy of our trust. It is the Garleans who are deserving of our fury. I shall see that my brethren learn the truth of this day, and rally as many as possible to the cause. Till we meet again. And thus did we make allies of the Amalja. It would certainly seem that way. The Sultana will be pleased. Let's go and give her the good news, shall we? in Ralga's name happened here? The gods only know. But you can bet these poor sods aren't here by choice. Quickly! We've got to get them free! Done. It's too late for them. We're leaving now.
for Dola. Have you been waiting here all this time? We have done what we can. The rest is up to him. May we see him? I do not think that wise. You must let him sleep. Thank you for bringing him back. He owes you his life. I just... I, I just wish I had been there. Perhaps... I don't know. Perhaps I could have... Could have what? Got tempered? Don't flatter yourself. You can't save everyone. No one can. Not even the warrior of bloody light. People die all the time, for no good reason. And those who take up the sword die quicker than most. If you're going to shed a tear every time a soldier falls on the battlefield, you'd best stay away. It's no place for the weak of heart. It may be that victory cannot be won without cost. But all life is precious, and I refuse to shrug at its loss. All life is precious! <laughs> oh, you need to grow up, little man, before your sparkling ideals get everyone killed. You're right. He is idealistic. But the world has more than its fair share of realists, like you and me. It's people like him who dare to dream that things could be better and make it happen against all the odds. They are the ones whose names live on forever. The heroes. The battlefield's littered with would-be heroes. At this rate, you lot will be next. And what will become of your precious dreams then? They'll be gone. Like dust on the wind. Dreams worth fighting for don't die so easily. Grace, pray forgive us our lateness. Think not of that. I understand a close comrade of yours was wounded in the line of duty. Arunvold. It was at the Alliance's behest that he risked all, and we are grieved to hear of his condition. Rest assured, he will receive the finest care our chirurgeons can provide. On that you have my word. Now, we would share with you the findings of the mission. Pippin, pray relate to our guests the details of Fordola's account. First Bahamut, now Ifrit. Or Luna Ifrit, as Fan Daniel would doubtless have it. Tis now all but certain that the towers were conceived to facilitate the summoning of primals by those imprisoned within. 
Less certain is the means by which the Telophoroi constrain the wills of said entities to enact their designs in defiance of the pleas of their victims. Mayhap they do not. If mere proximity to the towers is enough to make loyal servants of the Empire's mortal enemies, it stands to reason that the same is true for those held captive. They invoke their gods for the good of Garlemald, and in their disturbed state of mind, summon a primal whose form reflects their own alteration. It all begins to make sense. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the towers bear a striking resemblance to a much larger structure which Uriange and I observed from afar during our visit to the Imperial capital. Assuming it too is capable of tempering those in its immediate vicinity, it would go some way to explain the swiftness with which the Telophoroi managed to rally so many Imperials to their cause. While the situation in Garlemald is indeed troubling, I fear we have more immediate concerns. Ifrit was not the only primal summoned. At approximately the same time, observers at several other towers bore witness to the emergence of further such entities. For a blessing, None appear to wield aught approaching the destructive power of Bahamut, and the Grand Companies are moving to deal with the threat even as we speak. Though we are aware that the task will not be easy, we would call upon the Scions only as a last resort. Pray, conserve your strength for now. After all, it was not so very long ago that you rid us of Bahamut. On which note, I am pleased to report that our talks with the Amalja have reached an agreeable conclusion. They have pledged their full support to our cause. It is our hope that this historic agreement will encourage other tribes to join us at the negotiating table. And I know that I speak for all of the Allied leaders when I say that we will welcome them with open arms at such time as they do. Of course, this was only made possible by the feats of heroism performed at Pagelfarn. Moreover, we shall not allow the sacrifices of those fallen in battle to have been made in vain. As hope leads to victory, shall victory lead to a new dawn for Eorzea. May these words ever be our guide, Your Grace. Now, if you will forgive me, I must consult with the Syndicate on the matter of our new allies' integration. Till next we meet, my friends, I bid you safe travels and blessed respite. Welcome back. I expect you must all be exhausted. Ere you take your rest, however, I would beg a moment of your time. Thanks to Arnvold's selfless efforts, we may now be confident that we understand the function of the towers. But many questions remain regarding the reason for the summonings, and what lurks behind the looming edifice in Garlemald. Until such questions are answered, we will struggle to devise an effective strategy for thwarting the Telophoroi's stated aim. Nothing less than the destruction of this star. And so, given the gravity of the situation, I move that we petition the aid of Charlian. It is... Possible the ancient knowledge preserved within their archives may hide a clue to our enemy's methods. But given Charlian's established policy of non-intervention, our former colleagues are not like to aid us in its discovery. 
Oh, I well remember what they're like. The Forum's barefaced refusal to assist you in the days prior to the Calamity must rank as Charlian's most shameful act since the Exodus. But were the final days to be reenacted, it would spell doom for us all. Surely even they cannot turn a blind eye to that. I trust we are all of the same mind on this matter. Urgent as it seemed, I took the liberty of petitioning the Alliance for leave to act as Eorzea's emissary, and have since received their blessing. I presume your role as a student of Baldessian will carry some weight with the Forum? One can but hope. If truth be told, our organization has been a shadow of its former self ever since the disappearance of the Isle of Val. But the name does still retain some degree of prestige. I only pray it will be enough. If there are no objections, I shall depart for Charlian at once. But before I do, I should also mention the other matter to which I would devote some time during my stay. After hearing what transpired in the first, I began to question the true nature of Heidelin's blessing. A topic I have discussed at some length with Yishtola. We were wondering, when was the last time Heidelin spoke to you directly? When Elidibus sought to make warriors of light, that was the voice which calls constantly to all who might hear it. I spoke of direct communication, when Hydaelyn communed solely with you. A far rarer occurrence. History shows us that Hydaelyn is able to awaken the echo in her chosen, convey her will directly, and grant the blessing of light. To our knowledge, however, she has not sought to intervene in man's affairs for some considerable time. Might not the explanation for that lie with her choice of champion? Mayhap she is content to trust in his judgment. Mayhap she is. But following my initial discussion with Kryle, I made inquiries of my own. And as far as I am able to tell, Hydaelyn has not made her will known to anyone. During my time in the first, the Oracle of Light spoke to me through Reen. But that was not the will of Hydaelyn. It was Minfilia herself. Indeed. And while she and Hydaelyn were inextricably linked, Minfilia yet acted of her own volition. A messenger, yes, but one who spoke with her own voice. I wonder, could Hydaelyn's silence suggest the presence of some disruptive force, perhaps? some obstacle to communication. While I share Uriange's high opinion of your conduct, I see no reason why she would deny you her guidance altogether. Then again, who am I to say? The fact is, we simply don't know. But if the explanation is to be found anywhere, I can think of worse places to look than the archives of Charlian, and their research on the Ethereal Sea in particular. Resolved though I am to go, believe me when I say that I take no pleasure in the thought of leaving you a member short. Now of all times. Estinian, we stand on the eve of a struggle that will decide the fate of this star. One in which we Scions may play a telling part, yet we are but few in number. And so I must ask you again. Will you join us? You see the world the way you want it to be. I see the world the way it is. You are idealistic to a fault. But I know you would never turn your back on those in need. 
Never close your eyes to their suffering. And somehow, your deeds lend truth to your words, giving the lie to my doubts in so doing. I have seen others draw strength from your belief. In Ishgard, in Alamigo, you inspired them to stand up and fight. To win, no less. And even when you lost those you held dear, you carried their spirit with you and made their memory your guiding light. The burden of so many hopes and dreams would be too heavy for most to bear. But you bear it willingly, as you have shown me. Some dreams are too important to let go. If you have need of my strength, it's yours. After all you've done, how could I refuse? Thank you, Estinian. Whatever challenges await us, I shall not falter. You have my word. And now I may bid you farewell, safe in the knowledge that all is as it should be, in this little corner of the world at least. You will be sorely missed. Tread warily in Charlian, and do try not to let the Forum embroil you in their politics. A forlorn hope, I know, given the individuals involved. I shall do my very best. Farewell. Does this one meet with your approval? Apparently not. Or... Could it be that you're still upset about the dragons? You are unwise to remind me of so costly a failure. It will not affect our plans, I trust. Oh, hardly at all. Though, admittedly, the chances of us being able to procure any more Merisidian dragons are rather slimmer following Tiamat's reappearance. Oh, but the seeds have been sown, my lord. We have only to wait for them to quicken. Speaking of preparations, is it safe to assume that you will be ready to control you-know-what? The hour draws nigh. This nation, forged for Asian ends, will finally prove its worth. <laughs> A mighty empire, now no more than an instrument of this star's destruction. What a pleasure it will be to put it to use. Which brings me back to our earlier topic. My lord, while I appreciate that it is not an easy decision, it really is past time you chose your weapon. There is one that I have been meaning to test. Mm. 
Well, well, not quite what I was expecting. Though I will say, it does seem rather apt. Esteemed guests, you honor us with your presence. As there is much to discuss, let us begin. Information on our taken brethren you have, yes? Hear it, we would! Ah! Beyond forgiveness, these featherless ones are! With rivers of blood shall they pay! Freed our people must be! We too would see your kin liberated. But ere we attempt their rescue, we must first find a means to negate the risk of tempering. Without that, we will be unable even to approach the towers, let alone contend with their defenders. If all else fails, I've always found cannonballs quite effective. And what of the prisoners? Would you see them slaughtered? Think for a moment. Ponder, consider, think. If Merlwib truly intended to bombard the towers, she would have done so by now. Remember, we came here to find a solution together, did we not? Yistola spoke of defenders. I but offered a means to clear a path, should you require it. Given the enemy's capabilities, we will all need to play our part if we are to have any chance of success. For if any here should give less than their best, it will be to the cost of every living being on this star. A paragon? The Empire? Our very gods? How can we hope to prevail against such odds? That our foe is formidable, none would deny. But our strengths are many and varied. In this chamber, I see masters of strategy, masters of magic, masters of the land, the air, and the sea. And together, there is nothing in creation we cannot overcome. I beg your pardon? What is it, Sir Walker? Do you not express your passion thus? A little frisky will have deals, perhaps? <laughs> Suffice it to say, I am proud to be counted amongst the Aosius finest. <laughs> we, Sir Hagen, will play our part. We kobolds have not forgotten the crimes the Overdwellers committed against us in the past. But today we look to the future as allies united in purpose. Ah! Make mock of the Ixel the Paragon does! Turns kin into puppets! It's brother against brother. Free them from his grasp, we shall. As Patriarch Zadar will attest, the Scions have granted us a means to free your brethren from their thraldom. This boon we will gladly share, that your people might never be enslaved again. 
We accept! We accept! Praise me! It's taken a while, but I do believe we might be one step closer to a world without primals. Would that Minfilia were here to see it? We still have a long way to go, and we're going to need a lot more Porxies. But we're moving in the right direction. If I may have your attention, there is one other point I would like to raise. As we can all agree, freeing those held captive must take precedence over every other concern. But experience has taught us that none save those with the capacity to resist tempering can hope to enter the towers unscathed. And even once inside, a still greater threat may yet await them, that which we call a primal. Needless to say, if we are to succeed, engaging with such foes can only ever be considered a last resort. And so I move that we seek to prevent them from being summoned in the first place. Yes! Both prayer and ether are needed for the ritual. Should either one be denied, the summoning would fail. Indeed. And so we must endeavor to discover the source of the ether on which the process depends. Do so, and it may present a way to halt the summonings, or perhaps even neutralize the towers entirely. A promising proposal. While you are conducting your investigations, however, we will need to remain vigilant, lest the Telophoroi commit further abductions and summon primals ere we have the means to prevent them. To stand a better chance of keeping our enemy at bay, we would do well to coordinate our defensive efforts, sending reinforcements to assist our neighbors when needed. We Amalja would have been overwhelmed were it not for our newfound allies. But say the word, and we shall come. I see we are all in accord. But what are we to call this proud fellowship of ours? I submit that the honor of naming it should go to the Scion whose brave efforts have done so much to unite Eorzea. What say you, my friend? Might I suggest the Grand Company of Eorzea? I remember a certain someone pondering it once upon a time, and it seems as fitting a name as any. A fine choice, for there is none here who does not love Eorzea. Aye, in that we shall ever be united. United in our gratitude for the realm that gave us life. Then let it be recorded that on this day, the Grand Company of Eorzea was born. How long have we dreamed of this moment? And now that it's here, I... Oh, forgive me. Might we speak outside? Elder Seedseer, 
I thank you for granting me this audience. I am Fortuno Leveilleur, here in my capacity as representative of the Forum. It is I who should thank you, Master Fortuno, for journeying so far and so swiftly. Would that our first meeting could have been under happier circumstances. It has been too long, Father. You look well. As do you both. Amelians will be glad to hear that you are taking care of yourselves. How is Mother? She misses you terribly, of course, but is otherwise a picture of health. Circumstances apart, I'm grateful that our meeting has afforded me the chance to be reunited with my children at long last. And I believe I also owe you thanks for the hospitality you showed my father, Louis Wa, during his sojourn in Eorzea. All thanks we owe to him. In the days prior to the seventh umbral calamity, it was your father's tireless efforts which granted us a means to vanquish the primals. Were it not for him, our strength would have been quite spent by the time the Empire arrived. That Gridania still stands is in large part his achievement. He was a great man. He would doubtless have been moved to hear you say so. I must confess, however, that I opposed his decision to intervene. And my position remains unchanged. To chart the course of history, not to change it. I am familiar with the Charlian stance. It is more than that. It is our way of life, who we are. But I came here not to deliver a lecture, but the Forum's answer to your request. Charlian will under no circumstances intervene in the conflict between Eorzea and the Garlian Empire. May I ask for what reason the Forum has come to this decision? The final days spell the end not only for Eorzea, but the entire world. The final days. Pray spare me your hyperbole. This conflict is no more than the latest in a series of petty squabbles between yourselves and Garlemald. One in which Charlian will take no part. <laughs> if the final days were truly upon us, we would know. Father, you must ask the Forum to reconsider. You may feel safe on your little island across the waves, but if you imagine the Telophoroi will leave you be, you are mistaken. They mean to kill us all, themselves included. Alphano is right. We have seen what the enemy is capable of, the lengths to which they'll go. This is no time to turn a blind eye. If Eorzea falls, so too will Charlian. So if you truly love our homeland, you will join us. Now, before it's too late. <sighs> I thought you knew better than to raise your voice to your elders. It seems I was wrong. Wrong to ever let you leave, Charlian. I consoled myself that your time abroad would instill in you some hint of restraint, of discipline. But I see now that Eorzea has made fools of you both. Have you forgotten why it was that I so vehemently opposed your grandfather's departure? For all his wisdom, his only solution was to go to war. Death, devastation, ruin. Even those who claim victory are scarred for life. What prize could ever justify such sacrifice? It is the duty of the learned to avert such tragedy. By fanning the flames of war, you forsake all you once held dear.
I see your friend shares your misguided ideals. But unlike him, you should know better. By espousing such barbaric notions, you subvert the teachings of Charlian and place all we have worked for in jeopardy. Alfino, Alizé, as of this moment, you shall no longer bear the name of Leveilleur. What? Father? How you choose to live your lives is no longer my concern. If you wish to walk the path of ruin, I will not stand in your way. Master Fulchino, while Charlian may have no intention of intervening in this conflict, we can still part as friends. Will you not stay and speak with us, that we might learn of Charlian's hopes for the morrow? I have said what I came here to say. Any further discussion would be meaningless. Father! Wait! Don't bother, Alizé! How can you stand there and watch him walk away? How can you let this happen? Arnvold! I can't tell you how good it is to see you! It arrived a lot sooner than expected, eh? The day I craned my neck up at you. Only because you're sitting down? Unless... Afraid so. The Chirurgians say I may never walk again. Come on, Alfino. It could be worse. Besides... I didn't come here to dampen the mood. Quite the opposite. All I've ever wanted was to fight for a cause I believe in. But my fighting days are over. So I want you to fight in my stead. Be the hero I can't. I am no hero. That's what they all say, though. No one ever calls themselves a hero. Even the ones who eat primals for breakfast. It's for others to decide. Look, Alfino. You already are a hero. To me and countless others. We see you doing your damnedest to protect us all. And you're not alone, are you? There are people who believe in you, just as you believe in them. What's at stake, and how many people are depending on you. But I believe in you. Believe that you'll see it through. That's why I'm entrusting my dreams to you. Like Albert and Owley once entrusted their dreams to me. There was a time when I would have borne the weight of such expectations without a second thought. 
But now, I know just how heavy that burden can be. To tell the truth, I'm beginning to wonder if I chose the right path. Sacrifices will inevitably be made for the sake of the ideals I uphold. Maybe I am not the person I thought I was. The person you think I am. I wouldn't presume to tell you. But I will say this. In spite of everything, you've come this far. The road ahead might not always be clear, but you've never been one to give up or take the easy way out. And everything you do, you do for others. For a brighter future. I'm proud to call you my friend. Well, I've said my piece, so I'll let you go. I know you've got more important things to be doing. Just... give what I've said some thought, all right? I shall, my friend. And we will meet again soon, I promise. Nothing left for me to do but wave and smile. Pretty narrow view of what it means to be a hero, do you know that? You think they're all forged in the fires of battle? That it's all about being brave and killing villains? Alpha No and the others will carry on their fight. But theirs isn't the only one. There are other ways you can make a difference. If you stop feeling sorry for yourself and put your bloody mind to it. There's not much chance of me living the quiet life with you around, is there? If you're content to twiddle your thumbs thinking of what might have been, that's your lookout. Then I reckon you've got some fight left in you. And I reckon you might be right. If there's a way I can still help my friends, I'll bloody well find it. My fellow Scions, as I am sure you will have heard, we can expect no help from Charlie, nor are we any closer to discerning the Telophoroi's grand design. And now, our adversary moves against us in unprecedented numbers, compelling us to answer in kind. The outlook, in short, is bleak. Yet though our foes are many, and we but few, we may still tip the balance in Eorzea's favour. Of course. We will do what we always do. Deal with the ones our allies can't. A less than daunting prospect, judging by your expression. Could it be that you've dispelled your lingering doubts, Alphino? Oh, I doubt I ever will. But as my friends have kindly reminded me, I have come this far, and that must count for something. God be good, Alphino. That's what we've been trying to tell you all along. For one so bright, you 
can be remarkably dim at times. There is such a thing as overthinking, you know. Might I suggest that we continue this conversation after the battle? It would appear that Tolofaroi have already arrived. I'll do what I can to cure the Tempered, but they'll have to be incapacitated first. Have care, my friends, for none can say wherefore our foe did choose this fateful field to be our battleground. Whatever may transpire, pray grant him not the pleasure of deterring you. Another plan went up in smoke. I am beginning to see why Lord Xenos thinks so highly of you. Not that this changes anything you understand. You have merely earned yourself a stay of execution. How fair the tempered. We've treated as many as we can, but some were beyond help. Do not hang your head so, brave Scions. Though not all of our captured brethren could be saved, we are grateful for those whose minds have been restored. You could do no more, and that is enough. So please hold your heads high. quicker, but I'll do better next time. Thank you for your kind words. They mean a lot.
A victory at great cost, but a victory nonetheless. We must stay strong and press on. Isn't that right? <laughs> it really must count for something.
a prayer to keep us ever by your side, an undying promise that we just might carry on in a song. Pray don't forget us, your bygone kin, with one world's end as a new begin. And should our souls scatter unto the wind, still we shall.